when they made this drug, of course they're going to improve the drug, also improve the affinity for the androgen receptor where it is going to work. What's up guys, it's Philippe from Alpha Mode, welcome back. Since the video where I told you guys that I actually used to take a lot of steroids, I have been getting a lot of questions in the commentary field and in the personal messages and just overall, if IU58841 will protect against steroid induced hair loss. So to sum it up short guys, for those of you who just want the short answer, no, it will not always, but sometimes it might help. I know, that sucks. It's a pretty bad answer, but it is the truth. Now, if you want to know why that is the truth and want to know how you can assess your own hair loss and what to look for, stick around. Before we start the video, guys, I gotta make this announcement. This is purely entertainment. It is not educational. I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. You should see a physician by any kind of medical advice you want. You should see a professional. You shouldn't ask me, you shouldn't do what I do. This is just for entertainment. Whatever, don't do what I do. Let's continue. So the real topic for today will actually be receptor affinity. Now what is receptor affinity? To help me explain, I have a little video for you guys that is going to show you the basics of how some drugs and receptors work together. Though since my office isn't done yet, I'll have to use my phone to just follow the movie I'm going to show you guys so I can explain while you're watching the movie. Please bear with me for some time. I'm still working on it. So the first part we see here where the blue triangle is the drug. You can call it IU58841 if you like to, if it makes it even more simple for you to understand. And the little satellite arm you see in purple is the receptor. This is a pretty basic drawing to just give you the basics of receptors and drugs and affinities. So how a drug works and what a receptor is, is like the drug is like a key. It won't fit into all keyholes and it won't turn all keyholes. It will turn some keyholes. The same thing goes kind of like for receptors and drugs, except if a drug resembles the original drug that the receptor is made for, it can activate the receptor. If you watch the movie here, the first drug fits perfectly. So it is going to have a good affinity for that receptor. Now, if we watch the next video here, the first drug you see doesn't fit perfectly, but it fits to some degree. This means that this drug will activate or just block the receptor, but if a better or more suitable drug or anything like that hormone comes by, it will knock it out and take its place. That is what's called having a higher receptor affinity. You can also think of it like in this way, that let's say I was about to fall off a cliff and the only thing I could get my hand onto is this bottle. If I'm going to hold on to this bottle right now, I'm going to have a pretty bad grip. And you can call my grip my affinity to just not fall down. The same thing goes for, let's say, if I were to take... Wow, this is going to be improvised. But let's say if I were to grip onto this, I will have a way better grip. I won't fall that easy. It is a higher affinity for this grip. So basically what you see is the drug is trying to stick to the receptor but the affinity determines how well it will stick. And lastly, another example to make it a little more easy to understand and comprehend. Try and imagine that this drug were actually sitting on the receptor in the beginning. Then another drug came by that has a higher receptor affinity and knocked it all off. Then it takes its place. So where does all this receptor affinity drugs affinity, receptor, whatever, where does it all fit together with hormones and IU58841 or what we call antagonists. To sum it up short guys, IU58841 doesn't have a really high affinity for the androgen receptor. This means that it will stick to it, 
and try and block out some other hormones from reaching it, but it is not as strong as other stuff are. Take for example DHT, what we are trying to combat with finasteride and IU5841. It has a way higher affinity than testosterone. So while IU5841 is good for blocking testosterone, it's not as good for blocking DHT. Then let's take it up a notch. Let's take something like nandrolone. Okay, so nandrolone is an engineered hormone. This means that it is a man-made substance that was created to be better than the parent hormone. Nandrolone is actually also called NOR19 testosterone. Now, as you can see, it is actually in the family of testosterone. When they made this drug, of course, they are going to improve the drug, also improve the affinity for the androgen receptor where it is going to work. So, of course, nandrolone is stronger than testosterone. And probably nandrolone is also stronger than IU58841. So, as you can see, guys, if you are taking exogenous testosterone, it might help. Let's say you are taking something instead like trenbolone. Trenbolone has a pretty high receptor affinity for the androgen receptor and way higher than IU58841, which means in the videos that you saw, if the IU58841 is blocking a receptor, so the testosterone cannot get to it, trust me, the trenbolone will. So basically guys, this is why if you want to keep your hair, steroids is not a very good solution. Now there is some other things that play a pretty important part here, and that is the androgen ratio, okay? But this is a topic I will clear in another video if you would like to hear about what steroids are more hair safe and how to look for hair safe steroids, please comment below. I will make a video, I will explain it just like I did in this one. And guys, if this video has been of any help to you, please like, subscribe, hit the buttons, it helps me out. And it helps me to know what kind of content you guys like. One last thing I want to mention guys, actually I am at the moment dating a med student. She's almost done, it's almost a doctor. Her father's actually a surgeon. She's pretty well versed in the medical world. So if you guys have any more medical questions and you want a real Scandinavian doctor to answer them for you, please post in the comments down below that you actually want to see her get on and maybe answer some of your questions and post your questions. Okay guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye.